Suffering is something that every human has endured, at some point, to one degree or another. Often, the suffering comes in crashing waves, one after the other, thrusting you to the ocean floor and keeping you down with their sheer force for long periods of time. These times are often lonely, filled with pain and strife. But, while it is painful and hard for everyone, suffering is truly one of the greatest gifts given to man because of its amazing capacity to strengthen both you individually and your relationships with the friends that help you through trials, the greatest of these friends being God himself. I know that right about now, you're all thinking I'm pretty crazy. How could suffering possibly be a good thing? I, un I intend on proving to you that while, yes, we all fear the suffocating, painful coils of suffering, after the pain there is good that comes of it, and that good comes in many ways. First, in sufferings and trials, you discover who your real friends are, and grow deeper in your relationships with them as you pour out your sorrows to these true friends who listen, understand, sympathize, and encourage with truth, not just platitudes. These friendships grow and even thrive in adversity. This is because when you lean on someone and later support them as they struggle over their own dry, desert cliffs of trial, you let friendship take root and grow. Just as a desert rose grows strong beneath the sun's fury abuse, so a, so a relationship buds as a beautiful, lasting stronghold through adversity's flames. Sure, some friendships come easily, but until you have cried and even fought with one another, they often lack depth. Another way suffering helps us is by teaching us endurance, patience, and trust as we go through extended periods with only one hope, the hope that God's plans are always and only for good. Jeremiah 29.11 reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. God knows what is going on in your life, and he is in control of it. But more than that, he knows how much it pains you, and your pain is his own. For we do not have a high priest unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. We do not have a high priest ignorant of pain. We do not have a high priest filled with spite like an ancient, revenge-fueled Greek deity. We do not have a high priest that laughingly devises our stormy seas and takes lightly our desperate pleas for help. We do not have a high priest that has placed himself above the muck and dirt and struggle of our earth, the one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin so that we can with confidence come near to his throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace in our desperate wastelands of need. The greatest thing suffering does for us is lend us strength. It forces us against the powerful, wicked current, that current that pulls and rips and tears and shreds, leaving us bare and weak and exposed. It peels away everything we trust in, everything we love. It wears us down until we are too exhausted to dream and takes away everything that holds us back from fully placing our trust in God, everything that keeps us from releasing our frayed and failing synthetic lifeline and clinging with both arms to our Savior. He is our refuge and strength, and there is nothing more gratifying than allowing His strength to shine through our weakness. Alone, we can never overcome these waves. The purest of gold comes from the hottest flames, but even the best of gold is soft and weak until blent with other stronger metals. God's grace is sufficient for us because his power, his iron-like strength, is made perfect in weakness, and God only knows how weak we are. So in our sufferings, our pains, our weaknesses, let us run to him. Let us throw ourselves into his warm embrace, as a young child runs to their father. For we do not have a high priest that seeks to distance himself from our unworthiness, but the high priest that lays aside his robes to be the caring father, the best friend, the great comforter. He is forever trustworthy in all things, and he is in control. He will never betray us or forsake us, and he cannot let us down, for he is perfect. We can rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. As long as we know this, as long as we keep it in our heart and stand strong in this steadfast rock of truth, even as the seas of suffering and trial rage around us, no suffering could ever cut so deep that his tender embrace would not heal every trace of it.